so it's kind of uh, so you know kind of, kind of like uh, kind of like you know playing a uh, piano. Um, so professional stenographers and court reporters uh, have used this system to capture text at the speed of speech. Uh, but it's been a locked down art for a long time. Uh, its software had been proprietary uh, and the specialized keyboards uh, for it um, basically cost as much as like, a, as like one of our laptops, basically. Um, but thanks to the efforts of the, uh, the Open Steno project uh, here, uh, we have uh, Plover, which is an open source uh, stenography engine. Oh, not uh, if I selected that properly. Oh, I have to use the mouse. Okay, there we go. Selected properly now. There we go. So, uh, so we've got uh, we've got Plover, uh, and uh, so it's an open source sonography uh, engine available to anyone, and it can turn any uh, N key rollover compatible keyboard uh, into a fully fledged steno coding machine. So what I mean by that is if I go back to uh, the terminal here and I can press you know, all of the keys on my keyboard here, did I get all of them? Yep. So all of those keyboards, all, all those keys there um, accept input at the same time. So that's like the, you know, the N and the N key rollover. And typically your keyboard that you would use normally uh, can take up to six key inputs at the same time. So that's probably enough for you to be able to do a you know, relatively complicated uh, you know, keyboard shortcut, uh, but not enough to do steno. Um, and, uh, and so what you're seeing also on the screen uh, above, above the, uh, the layout display there is, uh, is my dedicated steno machine. Uh, it's, uh, it's called a, a Georgie. Can you see that there? It's like the keys there. Is the lighting okay? Mm, anyway, all right. Well, it's uh, and uh, so you can sort of see what I'm doing. So, like, you know, I have nothing, nothing up my sleeve as I uh, as I sort of do all this up here. Um, and then and then down below, you can sort of see a representation of uh, you know what uh, what uh, what uh, keys I'm pressing. Uh, not prefacing, but uh, oh, I okay, right pressing. There we go. Um, and so, uh, and so, the output on here can be, you know, on from a standard keyboard it can be anything from like a single letter. So, say for example, you know, I want, you know, uh, the letter S, T, P, and H. Uh, so they're like, you know, the single key or the single key uh, letters that we can put there. But if we want anything more, not not complex, but other letters uh, require cording. So, say for example, L is like H R together, whereas uh, you know, M is P H and N is T P H. And uh, J is S K S K W R, and uh, you know G is T K P W, and Z is S T K P W, and so that's all well and good, right? But um, you know, this is not so interesting if all it does is what you can do with your standard keyboard, right? So where the magic of Steno comes in is where with you know using chords to be able to write, you know, words, uh, and so. Um, you know, I've written, you know, there you sort of saw with Hello World that it was like, you know, one word after the other, you know, Hello World. But then this gets even more powerful when you start doing phrasing. So say, for example, you know, I can say like, you know, this is a, you know, pen. And I can then say, say uh, like, you know, it was on the, whoops, uh, where are we? On the uh, table. And, uh, and, you know, from there we can then go to like even, you know, even fuller phrases than that. Like say, for example, uh what's a good one here we go ladies and gentlemen of the jury so steno has a rich uh history with the legal profession so uh so something like this would be used a lot uh you know by uh, by certain lawyers um so then we've also got, got other ones like say for example you know as a matter of fact that's like one chord and uh i don't know what's another one like say burden of whoop, burden of proof uh, and uh, and we're not limited also to just ASCII characters. Uh, you know, we can uh, use uh, you know OpenSteno to do emojis as well. So you know, maybe I want to do the uh, you know this the, the smile emoji or or laughing or maybe like uh, you know um, uh, where are we? Uh, oh, this is a good one too. Don't want to screw this one up. Uh, there we go. Flip table uh, and uh, or like you know reverse a flip table or reflip the table back. Um, and uh, and then you know then we've also got like party tricks like uh, I don't know uh, like you know super like a super califragilistic expialidocious and like however it is that you're supposed to pronounce the uh, the reverse of that uh, I don't actually know 
But, uh, but you know, obviously this is all well, good and fun, but, you know, can we use this for dev work here? Um, then the answer is, of course, can. So, um, you know, I'll show you first what, uh, what I tend to do uh, during dev. Uh, everyone here uses git, right? So, uh, you know, I've got like, say, you know, git add here. Um, oops, I uh, wanted to, well, okay, screwed that one up. Let's, uh, let's try something else. Right, that's what I wanted to do. So we've got git add. Git add, cool. And then uh, say like, you know, git commit as well. So we want to say like, you know, you know, initial, initial commit, and then maybe, you know, do git push. And so each of those commands there was sort of done with a uh, with a steno cord, and um, we can also uh, you know do use uh, use them for Rails commands like uh, you know like Rails new uh, you know uh, I don't know like my app, and then we can say something like uh, oh, I don't know like you know with a database flag, and we'll say you know we want uh, Postgres. Uh, and how about uh, you know doing a, a starting a Rails server? We can go like you know Rails server. And um, we can, or we can uh, do a Rails DB migrate, for example, like Rails uh, DB and, uh, and migrate. There we go. Um, so this is all cool, and uh, but you know the Steno cords are not limited to uh, to output or to, to producing text output either. So we can use them for computer hot commands. So say, for example, if I sort of go up here and I'll take, uh, you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious here and I'll sort of do a copy. I'll go back down to the, to the document here and I'll just do a paste here. So you can sort of see uh, down at the bottom there of the, oh, if you can't, you probably can't see it from the back. Let me just do some, bring it back up there for you. So just on that log there, you can sort of see that there's like a uh, super V here. So super is like the uh, keyboard firmware version of like command on a Mac keyboard there. So it's, uh, it's you know, just emulating uh, the paste, uh, the paste functionality. And I can also do things like, um, you know, open and close that particular, you know, tape log there, you know, bring it up again. And then you can also, you can see there that this is like a really, really long uh, keyboard shortcut. It's got like shift, control, alt, and uh, command all at the same time. Uh, really awkward if you're going to use a QWERTY keyboard uh, to press it, but uh, but with Steno, uh, it's just as easy as, uh, as any other chord. Um, also, uh, where are we here? Let me get back over to uh, my, uh, my terminal. So I can go, I can um, run scripts as well. So uh, you can sort of see here, uh, if I wanted to find, here we go, find git. Um, down the bottom there in the log there, it says like command and then page up and page down and find. Uh, and um, so the ability to be able to run these scripts here is made possible by Plover's uh, plugin uh, system. So, it's, so you know, in this case, it's allowing me to run a shell command, uh, which actually runs an Apple script. Uh, to determine, uh, you know, what a page up or page down or a find should be, uh, you know, in uh, depending on uh, on what app is in focus. Um, if I could use something else apart from Apple Script, like I totally would, uh, but I don't know of any cross-platform systems programming language that exists that would allow me to do it in something else. So if you know one, then like let me know. I am like all ears. Um, so uh, anyway, so given that uh, you know Steno can be used for coding, uh, so. Well, you know, you can output anything that your keyboard can, so it stands to reason. So, of course, we can use it for coding. But, you know, of course, writing code uh, isn't the same as writing prose. Uh, you know, we have text structures and boilerplate. We have, like, strings and arrays and methods and blocks and, uh, you know, if statements and case statements. Uh, and because I'm really lazy and I don't want to uh, have to write all of that stuff out by hand, um, you know, if I can, if I can get a leg up somehow, then I will take it. Uh, plenty of devs use their uh, IDEs uh, to help out with, you know, auto typing that kind of boilerplate. Uh, but since I am a, a Vim user, uh, I had to uh, look for some plugins, uh, and uh, what I ended up finding was uh, Ulti Snips. So this is kind of a uh, uh, a sort of set of snippets here that allowed me to create a, a I guess, a, a layer of snippets above Steno uh, that, uh, that at least, you know, for me, sort of makes me feel like I can code Ruby using sort of a bit more like natural language. Uh, and uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. So sort of switch files here over to a, a Ruby file. And, uh, and well, let's, uh, let's start off simple. 
So we'll go and uh, say, right, I want to create a string. And then string in my snippets is just a, a trigger word here. So I'll trigger it with like the tab key there and it just turns it into a string. Uh, well, it turns it into a set of, uh, of brackets there. And I can just kind of go, uh, oops, I've got this the computer sort of like falling down. I might have to periodically adjust that as we go along. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, ooh, where are we? Uh, you know, hello world, we're older. And, uh, and so at this point, I'm done with the input within the string, so I need to basically get out of the string. And so within each individual snippet there, there are certain tab stops there. So the tab stops where it sort of waits for your input in there. And so in this case, it sort of waited for me to put something in the string, and now it's waiting for me to you know, decide wh what I want to do next. In this case, I'll just tab stop out, and we can sort of continue on our way here. Uh, similar with you know, an, uh, an array. So here's my array. I can do like, you know, an array, one, two, three. And then once I'm done with uh, what I want to put in the array, then I just tab stop out again. Uh, that word, that array can also be a, uh, a word array. And so, you know, uh, these are uh, all words, not chords, but they are words. And, uh, and similar with, uh, with sim, uh, symbols as well. So um, uh, you know, sim, symbol uh, array. And, uh, and, you know, these are all uh symbols mm. there we go okay so these are all symbols uh we can also do hashes as well so say for example if i just do hash that's another keyword here and uh, let's do say uh, you know keys as strings so if i'd say uh, all right i want uh, you know foo as my string and then in here let's say i want to have the value be the string bar so we can do nested snippets as well. So if I want to have that as a, a string, then I just put string in there and then I put in bar. And now we're, nest, we're in sort of nested snippet land. So if I you know, sort of go to the next tab stop, it's kind of gotten me to the end of the string. And then I keep on going along until I hit the end of the, uh, the, end of the hash. And, uh, and sort of you know, similarly for if I want to have um, uh, keys that are symbols. So if I just sort of get rid of this, then it turns it into uh, a, uh, a symbol, and then I can just kind of, you know, go along my way, my my merry way, and uh, and you know, you can see the support for both flavors of hash. Uh, if I want to do an if statement, if is also a trigger word here, so I can just be like, all right, well, if uh, let's say, you know, if f uh, equals uh, like x equals what, like three, then uh, I don't know, like you know, uh, puts uh, puts a string. And then, uh, I don't know, like, uh, yay, yeah, that'll do. Uh, else, do something else. So else here, like sometimes we want an else block, sometimes we don't. So it's sort of highlighting everything, sort of saying, um, you can delete this if you want. But, uh, but you know, if I don't, then I just go into the else block and, uh, and I don't know, do uh, puts a, a string and uh, that can be boo. <laughs> And, uh, and keep tab stopping until the end of the of the if block here. Uh, same kind of thing for a uh, for a case statement here. I can sort of say, all right, let's say I want a you know case uh, statement with something. Uh, when it is a string, then you know do something. When it is like say for example, uh, you know an array, go and do something else. Uh, if I need to put in another uh, another condition here, I can just kind of I can just do uh, you know when. And then that will sort of set up another condition there for me. So, you know, when this is say, I don't know, like a, 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 a hat and do something. And then even with that nested uh, snippet in there, it then falls down to the else block to do, you know, whatever else I need to do there. And then uh, goes down to the end. So that's kind of like basic Ruby stuff, but we can also of course do uh, Rails related stuff as well. Uh, let's maybe start off with the uh, with the router so we can kind of go uh, all right with resources uh, let's say we want to have like you know resources posts uh, that particular route there takes a, an optional do block so we can either use it or we can just like, get rid of it uh, how about a a root route here so we can sort of say all right I want to route to uh, to posts and then uh, index action there and that's all that we need um, into controller land uh, if I go uh, have I? Oh, uh, completely frozen. All right, let me see if reconnecting this will. Thanks for letting me know that. Um, yep. Oh, is that? No. 
Oh, how did I lose that camera? That's really annoying. Uh, let's try another movie recording and it didn't 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 have these problems in rehearsal. <laughs> I'm going to reconnect and see if that will work. Live debugging. Here we go. It's found it again. Phew. Okay. All right, cool. You can see hands, it might be a little bit delayed. Yeah, it is a little bit delayed. Yeah, it's a bit choppy due to sharing my screen, but uh, but yeah, hopefully it's not too much jank. Um, so if I want to do uh, do a uh, like a controller class, uh, then I can go, uh, all right, it will sort of set all of this stuff up for me. I can go like, you know, post controller, set a, uh, set a post, a post, and then it will set and it will send me down to the uh, to like a set post uh, method here, and it will sort of uh, fill in the uh, the model uh, class there with uh, what it's what the snippet says is the most logical. So we'll go like you know post equals post find uh, uh, ID. That is not what I wanted to have happen there, but we'll move on to the next one, and uh, and then we've got our post params method here where we can be like all right, well you know post not advertisement. No, we don't want that. Uh, we want like a, a title. Uh, and then, and then it'll bring us up here to do, you know, a, you know, like a create method or or whatever else to move forward. Similar as uh, similar to the uh, to the controller class, uh, we can also do uh, where are we like uh, a model class as well. So uh, there we can say, all right, I want uh, to model a host class, and uh, in here I want to say like, you know, has uh, has many, uh, let's say comments. Uh, and then, you know, all of these, uh, like the class name, the foreign key, uh, we'll just like stick with the uh, general Rails defaults and not change them. So let's we'll just get rid of them. Uh, maybe we want to do some validation. So, you know, uh, validate uh, and then presence, let's say. So we can validate presence of, uh, of the title. And uh, we can say, all right, we've validated on create. And uh, with the message, uh, we won't worry about changing that. So we'll just sort of leave that, uh, leave that there as it is. Um, when it comes to view code, uh, I have some uh, some snippets related to ERB, uh, embedded Ruby there. So here we've got like a um, uh, what they call a choice tab stop. So it's giving me the option of four opening uh, ERB tags there for just evaluating, evaluating and outputting, doing raw output evaluation, and then just commenting it there. So what you probably end up seeing a lot in Rails applications is uh, sort of you know just um, you know out, uh, evaluating and outputting it, and then in here you know we'd have something like say you know post ID. And uh, and then maybe if you wanted to just do you know say like a uh, like a standard HTML, then uh, then we've got support for that there as well. Uh, maybe you want to interpolate the value uh, here and sort of say, all right, I want to interpolate the uh, the post uh, .id into the div class here, and we'll maybe give this uh, particular div also a class of uh, of post, and then you just kind of you know go and do whatever is necessary uh, in here. So, okay. When it comes to sort of like a general introduction, or I guess the uh, you know the entree of what stenography can do, uh, and uh, how it can be used in the daily workflow of a Ruby developer, um, you know now let's get on to the uh, the main course and uh, do a bit of uh, exorcism, shall we? So we'll go and uh, and solve that problem there. Uh, firstly, let's just go and reacquaint ourselves with uh, with the actual uh, problem. So here I've got the. Uh, uh, I've got the problem up. So Lun, it's sort of saying, given a uh, number, determine whether or not it is valid per the Lun formula. So it's a checksum formula that uh, that is used for uh, numbers like credit cards. And so the task is to check and see whether a string is valid. And so with validating, validating a number here, it says, OK, strings of length one or less are not valid. Um, spaces are allowed in the input, but they have to be stripped before checking and all other non-digit characters are disallowed. So we want to make sure that we've got a string that looks like two or more digits. Um, and, then, uh, and then the first step of the LUN algorithm there, oops, going the wrong way, uh, is to uh, take all of those digits starting from the right in chunks of two, and then the, uh, uh, the, the, the digit that you've got on the, uh, on the right, uh, they want you to double it. And then once you've doubled it, you can kind of go, okay, is that is that particular number more than nine? If it is more than nine, then subtract nine. 
And then uh, once you have done that to all of those pairs, you need to sum them all. And then you have to check to see whether it is evenly divisible by 10 to check and see whether it's valid. So it's a pretty chunky problem. Uh, and uh, let's get onto it then. Uh, so let's go back. And I've got uh, a environment here for this. Uh, just to sh prove that I've got uh, you know nothing up my sleeve. Here is a set of uh, tests here for this. Uh, for this, we've got uh, 16 errors. Uh, I'm not going to do this test-driven development here. We don't really have enough time for that. I'm just going to have the objective of having that be green. So uh, let's go and uh, and get to it, and uh, we'll see how far I can get. So the API for this is basically like lun.valid question mark, and then you pass in a value there. So it's not object oriented in this in this way. So I'm going to sort of solve this problem in a bit more of a functional way. And I'm going to do that uh, using uh, a module here. Where did my output go? Am I even on the, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a, uh, with a module, not with a hodge, but with a module. And, uh, and then from there, uh, all of the methods that I'm going to put underneath here are going to be uh, module functions, module function, function, come on, function, no? Fun I'll get it. What is going on? I'm pressing the wrong one. There we go. They're all module functions. Okay, right. So <laughs> uh, basically, so here, uh, his first, uh, first method. Uh, we want to have this be uh, called uh, valid. So valid question mark, and it takes in an argument of a string. Okay, so uh, so for this string, the first thing we wanted to do is to have uh, to strip it of white space, right? So let's do a bit of a reassignment here. We'll say you know string equals uh, string dot uh, g sub g sub, and uh, the pattern that we want here is a regex. So let's uh, create a, a new regex here. Uh, we don't really care about the start and beginning of them, but we want to get rid of white space. Uh, white space there. And uh, that's that S key there. We'll get rid of this. We don't really care about freezing the regex here. We just sort of like want all white space gone. And then the replacement, uh, we want it to be a, an empty string. So we'll just do this, the string that we saw before. All right, cool, first line. Uh, next, we want to basically do a return early guard clause uh, to make sure that uh, we have to make sure that this string matches that uh, two or more digits pattern. So uh, we'll do, uh, let's see here, uh, return. Uh, was it return false? Uh, unless uh, the string, uh, and if it, uh, if it matches, uh, I think matches, yep, question mark. Okay, cool. Uh, matches a pattern. And this particular pattern here, we're going to extract out into a uh, into a constant here, and we're going to call it uh, you know two or more two or more digits. Can I get this right? Uh, oh, yes, I can eventually. Uh, and I'll get rid of that offset. We don't really need that. Um, cool. So what I want to do is just quickly go back uh, and copy this. So what does two or more digits mean? Let's go back up to the, uh, the start of the LUN module here, and we can put that in. Uh, we're going to say two or more digits equals a, uh, a regex. So it'll be like another one. Uh, let's see, regex. And uh, in this case, we do care about the start and the end of the string here. Uh, we want to make sure that it's a, uh, it's a sort of a digit character, and it has to be two two or more, right? So we want to make sure that there's some kind of like, you know, repetition uh, repetition going on, and we want to have at least two. And we don't really care about how, like the maximum number, it just needs to have, you know, two. And uh, and since we've sort of stuck our regex up uh, into uh, constant land, we'll uh, we'll make sure to uh, do the right thing and freeze this. And because this, uh, this constant also uh, is not used uh, anywhere else, uh, we can say uh, that it is a private constant. All right, cool. So that's, we've got our first uh, part of the algorithm done. So next, what I want to do is basically sort of create, I guess, a, a manifest of how we're going to sort of go forth and solve this. So I'm going to do this in a bit of a, uh, I guess, elixir style pipeline-y way, just, so, just like a bunch of uh, methods that will sort of go and like pass a value in for, for transformation. So we'll start with the string itself 
And uh, then what I want to do is uh, have some kind of uh, inline function here. So this is a choice tab stop that I've got because Ruby has uh, the way that you can create a, a block or an anonymous function. There is like six different ways that you can actually do this. So I've got a tab stop for all of them and you'll see three of them uh, as a result of this. But the first thing that I want to show you here is, uh, is a local method, so five. So this is going to be a method that we're going to create uh, later, and it's going to be called, uh, you know, convert uh, convert to uh, reverse uh, reverse uh, and then numbers. Okay, so that's the first part. Once we've got our uh, our set of reverse numbers, we want to be able to chunk them out into sets of two. So we're going to be using the uh, the each. Uh, where are we here? Uh, each slice, uh, not slays, but uh, slice. Oh, we'll get that eventually. Slice. There we go. Uh, each slice. So we want uh, them to be two slices. Uh, the each slice method takes a block here, but we're not going to use it. Uh, instead, we are going to then take each of these slices here and uh, ooh, what do I do? Uh, and then put it inside of a. Uh, we'll send it off to another method. So um, here, once we've got each of the slices there, we want to basically calculate each of those pairs, and then we want to sum them all. So I'm going to do this in a little bit of a backwards fashion here, where I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to use the sum function here. We're not going to have an initial value, but I'm going to call yet another local method here. Oops, uh, that is not what I wanted to do. Do that sum again, get rid of this, and Five. Oh, no, it didn't work. Let's try it again. I'll get it. I promise. Five. There we go. Great. Uh, and we want that method to be to say a calculate pair. So uh, so we'll calculate the, uh, a pair. So we want, where are we? Pair. There we go. Okay. So for each of those uh, pairs that we calculate together, we want to sum them all. And finally, what we then want to do is uh, see whether they are divisible by 10. So we'll say, uh, uh, where are we? Uh, divisible, divisible by 10, question mark. All right, so that is our manifest of what we want to do here. So now we just need to write these functions. So let's, uh, let's go and do that right now. So I'll uh, we'll start off with, uh, so these, these are all going to be uh, private class methods. Unfortunately, Ruby doesn't have a private module method uh, keyword here. So it, sound, it looks sort of like a little bit strange to have class methods where you're not in a class, but uh, that's just the way that it is. So we're going to, uh, but you know, we want to indicate that these are internal to this particular module here. So first one is, um, uh, is that, uh, you know, convert to uh, reversed uh, numbers. And that will then take in that string that we see above. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We want to uh, basically take uh, the string. We want to reverse it, reverse it. Uh, we then want to uh, turn it into turn that string into an array. We'll break it out into an array of uh, of characters, so we can use the uh, the cars method for that. And then for each one of those elements of the array, we want to turn it into an integer, so we can use a map for this. Uh, not pap, but uh, but map. There we go. Uh, and here we are going to use a, a local proc. Oh, not that one. Uh, let's try again. Uh, a local right. Got that. Got that right there. So okay, local proc, and it's going to be um, to i. So you've probably seen that before in your uh, in your Ruby travels. So cool. That's the first one. First method. One down, two more to go. Uh, next one is going to be that calculate pair. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try that ag again. Uh, okay, so next one is uh, calculate pair. So calculate pair, pair. Uh, that one will take in the uh, the pair that we have been given from that uh, from the each slice method there. So we can actually destructure this uh, up here in the uh, in the um, uh, arguments area by sort of saying, okay, uh, I will say that I want to destructure the uh, the first value and then the second value. Okay, so we've got those two. 
So we want a guard clause here. So we want to make sure that um, uh, that if the second uh, number here is blank, then we just return the first. We don't need to calculate anything here because there's nothing to calculate. So we want to say, uh, you know, return uh, first if uh, if the second is uh, blank. Okay, guard clause done. Now comes the uh, the the real calculating stuff, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, okay, so we need to do the, that all that number stuff. So so for the the second value, uh, what we want to do is want to grab that value, and uh, then we want to uh, let's use an inline block uh, here, and we want to basically take that number and we want to uh, multiply it by two. All right, sounds easy enough. Uh, and then, 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 whoop, then, then, us, then. Okay, we'll do another inline block, and uh, we'll take that number again, the one that we just multiplied by two. And uh, now here we need to figure out if it is uh, more than nine, and if so, then uh, then uh, subtract nine, right? So this sounds like a good use case for a ternary. So we'll do that here. Uh, ternary. So the condition here is um, uh, is that number? Uh, is that number? Is it? Uh, it's like more uh, more than nine. And then if so, we want to uh, grab that number and then do like you know, uh, oops, minus nine. Uh, otherwise, return that number. And so now we've done the calculations that we need to for the second. And then at the very end, because we're summing all of these numbers together, the thing that we need to return from this particular method is just the first plus the second. All right. Two done, one to go. This will be the, probably the easiest one. So this is the one that uh, we need to uh, determine whether it is uh, divisible by 10 or not. So we'll say uh, divisible. Not, oh, where are we? Uh, uh, divisible by 10, question mark. Uh, and at that point, uh, we actually have the number that we're going to be passed in. And so from here, we can just do, all right, number dot uh, modulo, and that's going to be 10. So is it divided by 10? Is it, well, to get the, the modulo there from 10, and then we'll sort of say, uh, is it zero? And I think that is probably it. Let's see what the test suite says. Oops. And there you go. There's a passing test suite, as well as uh, Rubocop has had a look at, uh, at the code there. It's inspected it, and it's given me this uh, one green dot there. So uh, what else can I conclude aside from it is the only proper solution for this? Even the robot says so. It's completely perfect, and, uh, and there are no problems with it whatsoever. So. So that's all I got for you code-wise, but if you're interested in giving uh, Steno a try, then uh, you, know, you can go and check out the, uh, the um, Plover repo on... Uh, oh, that is some serious lag. I'm not looking at that page right now. There we go. Uh, on the Plover GitHub uh, repo there, where we've got a bunch of uh, beginner's guides. So they'll get you started with uh, getting Plover installed on your system. Uh, and uh, they'll get you prepared for the hard stuff, which is actually like learning Steno and uh, being able to do all this stuff. Uh, there's also a really great uh, community around Steno. So if you're interested in asking questions or like sort of, you know, finding others who are interested in it, then uh, the Plover Discord is a fantastic uh, resource there. There's, uh, you know, port reporters, captioners, hardware hackers, software developers, like all sorts of people uh, all united in their uh, interest of Steno on here. It's a really welcoming community, and I can definitely recommend uh, going and checking it out. Uh, and one last thing. Um, if you want to see a longer form Rails Steno demo in action, uh, then I have a, a YouTube video that recreates uh, DHH's uh, Rails 7 uh, blog demo that he put up. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, find that and uh, smash like and subscribe. Uh, so, yeah, look, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, all I've got uh, for now. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, all that's really, you know, left, uh, you know, for me to say is that uh, is... Uh, Thank you very much.
Oh yeah, right. You need this too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good speech. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, there's a few. All right. Let's start with you. Uh, just a short one. Uh, do you use this every day or is it just for fun? Uh, I, so it was, I went through a period where I, so the online can hear. So I, it started off as just for fun. So I'd have steno work just kind of siloed away from my real work on my, on my query keyboard. And then I went uh, into like a hybrid mode where I would do some stuff in steno, some stuff in like, say for example, you know, Slack chats or whatever, the pro stuff in steno, but I'd still code uh, using QWERTY. Uh, but at the beginning of this year, I had a new year's resolution to just be like, okay, that's it. Like has to be all steno all the time. And so I cleared my desk of all QWERTY keyboards and just kind of bit the bullet and uh, basically went through all the pain of finding out like exactly where all of the edge cases for coding were here. And uh, when I found them, you know, make a, um, uh, a snippet for it uh so but uh, but yes basically on my desk uh it's just this this is the only thing that's there thanks well um who else yep. uh, thanks that 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 was a nice demo uh, do you have to learn by heart all the different chords and things like that Some of them are a bit like that. So some of them are sort of, I guess, irregular chords where, uh, you know, the one, for example, for and uh, is uh, is sort of, you know, SKP on a steno keyboard, which is a bit sort of unintuitive. But basically steno here, they all have a theory. So, you know, on this on this keyboard here, each of the keys are not just letters, but they're also sounds. So, you know, they, rep they represent, um, you know, uh, long vowels, short vowels, uh, sounds like, you know, urch, inch, you know, g uh you know all of these uh, all, all the sounds that like a, an english speaker could uh, make and then once you sort of learnt that theory then you can basically start constructing words yourself by feel so uh you know it's tough to learn the theory at first but like once you've got it down then um then you know you can sort of start sort of thinking it in your head like how does this word sound and then you do you sort of like chord the word how it sounds and then eventually you get to the point where um you know if say for example it takes like multiple chords to make a single word uh you have the ability to be able to then like brief them so you can sort of like you know i guess uh like contract them all together so that you can uh, create um input a word with just a uh, you know a single chord for example thank you sweet uh any more questions yep oh and before that does anyone in the remote have any questions yeah probably not all right Wait. Yeah, I was curious about the early on you did like git add dot and git commit, etc. Um, were they single chords that you'd programmed as opposed to Vim where you were using the normal English language to, as well as snippets? And why didn't you program the same way in Vim that you did git commit a uh, git add? That is an excellent question and well spotted. Uh, the reason why is because um, it is fast. If I have a logical way to be able to chord it uh, with just using Plover and not any of the steno, uh, not the snippets, then I'll do it. With Git, for example, uh, I was able to find some combinations for a whole bunch of Git commands that made sense where I could brief them. So, like I would, uh, so rather than do like you know Git add. I would say, okay, I would just do, you know, the initial G and like Git meant G on the left side of the keyboard would be for Git. And then on the right hand side of the keyboard, there'd be like, you know, words that I would be able to just be like, all right, a single letter, like say, for example, for Git add, it would be D. So Git add D. And so the, I'd sort of pronounce the, the, the chord to be, you know, and a, a GID. And you know, git commit, git git commit is like just uh, git to do. It. <laughs> and so there's, uh, and so if I can, if I do that, then it uh, it just makes it a lot quicker. So I mean, I you can, I certainly could do this in uh, in Vim snippets, but uh, but I just found it like a lot quicker, uh, you know, to get muscle memory, uh, you know, doing it in uh, in my in my standard dictionaries which are all on my GitHub repo, by the way, they're all like JSON files. So, um, so definitely a format that all developers are familiar with. So you can go and, uh, and check out uh, all of them in there. I think we've got one more up the back if there's time. Yep. Um, do we have one more questions? Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yep. Oh, this will be the last one. <laughs> 
Oh, there is? I was just wondering, since I think Steno was originally designed for prose, are you ever tempted to write long-winded variable and function names, like Java-style <laughs> questions or Java-style functions and such? I would be tempted to write my Java-style functions, but... Uh... So no, no tempting to no tempting to write uh, you know extra long variable names, um, but it just makes them a lot easier. So you may have noticed that like one particular trick that I used in uh, for the two or more digits constant is I was able to use Plover to switch modes to screaming snake case. So I didn't have to like do you know capital letters or or underscores for you know every single you know part of that. It was just a case of switch the modes. And it will write it for me, and uh, and so I did that for you know sometimes for snake case, for camel case, or, or whatever. So that's something that uh, the plover itself, not the Vim snippets, uh, can help enable. I think there was a, was there a question online? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do have a question online. Brilliant. You start this adventure. Hello, Brendan. I'm going to read your question. You started this adventure to be faster. So how does your speed compare? So even accounting for the fact that it's really hard to live code in public in front of uh, in front of uh, you know a bunch of people watching you, uh, I'm probably now at maybe around about where I was with QWERTY. So, uh, but you know, from an ergonomics perspective, uh, it feels great, uh, and it's uh, it's really great. Uh, it it just like feels a lot nicer. Uh, my fingers have significantly less travel speed. Um, I am working on my speed. Uh, I definitely want to sort of get up to, you know, the X hundred words per minute. I mean, you know, Steno promotes like 200, 300 words, you know, speed of speech, like sounds amazing, right? I'm not there yet. Uh, and that, that's fine. I can live with that. I spent way more time trying to develop a system of, uh, you know, getting this to work with coding than I did with just, uh, you know, speed pros. Um, I don't plan to be a captioner or a court reporter at all. So, um, you know, getting that extra speed is kind of like a nice to have. Uh, 